In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the pen tool. In I, my, my ear. So if you didn't see our live where we launch all of our vector editing suite, definitely go check that out. I also have some previous videos talking through it, but this video is specific to the pen tool and we're gonna learn the ins and outs, how to add points, how to curve points and answer some of your questions about how the pen tool works. So let's dive into this. I have a couple of examples for us to go through. I have a lettering piece right here, just a nice script L. I have a little coffee mug illustration and then I have another thing to show you where I'm gonna use the pen tool with another asset that was already in Kittle. I'm gonna show you how you can combine those and use them together. Let's get started with the L right here. Now, if you don't know where the pen tool is, or if you're unfamiliar with it, it's going to be down here in your taskbar at the bottom. You can also hit the P key and it will come up for you for those of you who want your quick action or your shortcuts. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to tap P and now I am in the pen tool editor. If I want to get back to my cursor, I can just hit V or of course I can use these down here. So I'm going to hit P, go back into that. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can go about illustrating your elements, your type, whatever it is that you're going to be drawing over with the pen tool. Although you're not exactly drawing, you're creating vector points around it. So I guess it would be illustrating. So there's one method, which is to go and put all of your anchor points in place. And then there's another method, which is drawing on the go. So let's talk about the first one, which is selecting where you want your anchor points to go. If I'm gonna tackle a letter like this, then I'm just gonna start from one place that's usually gonna be on a curve, and then I'm gonna find different areas for me to go and drop uh, basically like accent points. And I'm not gonna go perfect on this. You can see it already kind of looks a little bit uh, ugly, and that's okay. All we're doing is trying to find um, where we wanna place all these points. I'm gonna show you a really, really neat trick in how to curve all these out. So let me just speed up through going through all of these points and then I'll show you what I mean. All right, as you can see here, this is quite ugly, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to easily and quickly put this into the shape of our letter L. So all I've done is gone through and put points all over the place, basically tracing or outlining our letter. So if I double click into this, I can see all of my points here. And of course I can grab any of them. I can move them around by clicking and dragging. I can hit Command Z to put it back where it goes. But the super special technique that I like to use is basically rounding all of these points. So if I double click, you can see that that point is already rounded. And so what I'm gonna to do is double click for every single point that you see here. I'm going to double click for this one, double click for this one, double click for this one. And now I'm not going to go through the entire thing. I'm going to show you what a completed letter looks like, but already we have curved points with our handles that we can go and adjust. So you can see after I created this as a curved path, these handles popped up, which allow me to then move the curvature to where I want it to go. And I can do this with any of them. So here's one down here. I can make the curve a little bit more steep or a little bit more shallow. And I can do these for all of them. So that way I can illustrate, I can trace around this letter perfectly. Same thing here, even if it's a really sharp or a really steep curve, I can do that with the handles super, super easily. I can just drag them out as far as I want to, curve them around, and I can also add more points by just double clicking along the path. So you can see here, you can see there's this white line inside the stroke. If I just double click on that, it adds another path just like that. And I can start using all of the handles. Now you might be wondering, can I use the handles independently? That is one of the questions that we were getting as we started working on the pen tool. And the answer is yes. <laughs> So if I select this one, and let's say I really like the curve of this left side, I'm not so much digging the right side, I can hold the Alt or the Option key, or you can hold the Alt or the Option key, and then now you can see as I've done that, that whole right side handle is blue. So I'm holding the Alt or the Option key, and when I click, it only will affect the right side. You see how the left side is not being affected? And so that's how you can do individual handle controls on the pen tool. You can get really sleek and customized objects, illustrations, whatever it is you're doing. So that is the first method, which is going around, adding all of your different points. And then, like I said, you can double click on any of these and they will round them perfectly. And then you can go 
and uh, move them to where you want to go. And that's my preferred method because I don't have to work so hard on drawing around it. But let's say you like that method better. Let me go ahead and get rid of this one. Let's do it again. So let's say you like drawing the curves as you go through whatever it is. Illustration, I don't know, maybe it's a skull you're drawing or a fox or lettering. Maybe you're a lettering artist and you want to vectorize it. Well, that's fine too. Let's go ahead and grab our first point right here. Same as the first option, I've made a point here. But let's go ahead and decide where we want this to go, maybe right here. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag, and as you can see, I have created a curved path, and then I can do that all the way around this letter. Now you can see it is curved right now. It's not straight anymore because I'm in curve mode, basically, outline curve mode, but that's okay. I can still click and then just drag the other way. I can drag the other option. And if I ever need to add more points right here, I can go back, double click to add more points. But for the sake of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and close in this area. Now, oh, let me show you this first. So if I do want to go back to having straight points, all I have to do is hover over, and then as you can see, right here, there's a little black dot underneath the pen tool. If I click that, then I'll go back to straight points. If that, let me just do it one more time. So if I'm curved like this, you can see the path of the pen tool will continue to be curved because it thinks I'm going to continue to do curved paths. But if I just hover over this, you can see that little black dot. And if I click that, it means I'm back in straight line points, all right? So another thing you might be wondering is, can I go off of this? Can I go off of the path and then continue to add more points with the pen tool? And the answer is yes. Yes. You can stop and then you can go back and add more points. So right now I'm in the selection tool. I'll go back to P and as you can see the, the pen tool and as you can see all of the dots are here, right? And if I hover over, you're gonna see that dot again. You're gonna see that black dot again. I can just click it and I can continue on with with my point just as if I was doing it and I hadn't clicked out of it. Now, one thing about that is if you've deselected the object and you click the pen tool, it will not show the outline. So you won't be adding any points if you don't select the object. So I need to select this, double click in to see the points. Then I need to select the pen tool Look at that little black dot right there, and then I can keep going as if I were continuing on. So that is the second way. Again, if I ever want to add more points, I can double click in and I can start using the handles to get the exact outline that I want. And just so you can see what this might look like finished, I've done it down here. It's the same letter L right here. If I double click in, you can see all of the points. I did them a little bit sporadically, definitely not as many points as I did <laughs> the first time up here, but probably less is more. I could probably add a couple more. These are definitely not the best way to do it. I just did it quickly for you so you can see, and I can still adjust any of these if I want to. So every time you vectorize something, every time you create something with the pen tool is going to be a new vector path. So let's look at how to do this with an illustration. So I have this nice mug over here. Of course, you don't have to do specific lettering. You can do anything. You can trace over any of your drawings. You can do it in your sketchbook or something like that. Maybe you're doing a little doodle like this is, a little doodle of a cup. I can take my pen tool and I can just start uh, drawing around this entire thing. And what I might do here, as opposed to like stopping right here and then going around, I might just come up here to the top uh, I might go around here and I might just curve. I may do a second one here, add a point right here, and boom. I would go ahead and do the outline of my cup and then I can continue on. I would probably draw all of these points independently like this, come down here like this, and then again, you see that black dot underneath it means I'm gonna close off the path. Now when you close off the path, that means that you can add a color to it, just like this, and I can change the color. I can also take the border off so that it is a specific color that has no, you'd have to make the border the same color or you'd have to take the border off or whatever it is you're trying to do. Of course, you can add a border to any of your illustrations or objects, but now because this is a closed path, I can change it to any color that I want to. And like I mentioned before in the lettering, if I double click in, I can see all of the points and I can continue to adjust them. I can add more points if I want to. I can make them curved. I can make them sharp. Anything that I want to do with it, I can manipulate the path, no problem. Now, I'm not going to go through and create this whole thing. I probably also wouldn't use the pen tool to make these 
eyeballs. For example, I would just grab the little shape builder tool and boom, I would just have my two little eyes like that. But here's an example of the finished one that I created with the pen tool. I've grouped them all together because I wanna keep all of my pieces separate for now. But I could go in, for example, and I could grab both of these and use the Unite tool. For example, you see over here, you see the shape building tool. I can add them together with Union Subtract, but we'll cover that in another video as well. Okay, one last thing I want to show you with the pen tool because you need to go ahead and go try it out for yourself and play around with it is using it along with the shape building option. So let's say I have this nice icon of a leaf and I'm going to create some cutouts, some fake shadows from this leaf. I'll grab this pen tool and I'm going to trace around the inside of this along the curve here. So maybe I want to come down here just like this and then instead of this i'm going to uh, curve like maybe like this and then bring it back you see that closed off right there so now it's closed hit the v to switch back over to the selection and i'm going to add a color i want it to be white and then I don't want a border for this, so I'm gonna take the border off. And so now you can see that there's this cutout. It gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. I can come in here and I can adjust the angles of it. I can, it can be more or less. I could add more to this. But let's say I actually like the way that that looks. I can grab both by holding the shift key or I can just drag my mouse over it. And even though I made that with the pen tool, it is its own vector SVG object now. I can just go over to the shape builder and subtract it from this leaf. So now anytime I change the background color to anything else, it's completely transparent. That's been cut away. And if I double click in, I can still see the points. I can still manipulate the points from inside this leaf. That's how you can get super customized things like objects, illustrations, logos. You can do this with logo type and you can use the pen tool to create new paths and then add them with existing shapes to create your own, which is really, really neat. Now, again, if you didn't check out our recent live where we had our founder, Tobias Saul, going through using all of our new vector editing tools to create a full branding project, I would strongly suggest you go and watch him as he utilizes each tool in each step, how he goes through and customizes type, customizes an illustration, uses the pen tool to add to an illustration. It's a really great look into the process, whereas this video was more so technical how to use the pen tool. And a couple of other FAQs just for you is, is it available in the free plan? The answer is yes. Well, yes. Is it available on iPads or tablets? At the time of this video, it's actually not, but we are working on how to figure out how to enable that for your iPad, for your tablet, for those devices that you use on the go on mobile. So for now, it's exclusive to the desktop version, although I would probably wanna be using it that way anyway, but we are looking into how to do it on the mobile version. If you're ever curious about how paths are looking over in the layers panel, you can always look over in the layers panel to see how something has been formed together. For example, you see this right here, it says subtract, and now you can see the path, which is here on this leaf that we've made. But let's go over to, let's say, the letter L, which we can jump down here, and you can see it's just one vector path. Nothing's been added or subtracted to it, and it's just, yeah, it's just one path. I can always click on it to access the nodes or the anchor points at any time using the left side layers panel. All right, so let me know any other questions about the pen tool that you have. I'm so excited for many of you to get in and use it yourself. Let us know what you think about it. Let us know if there's any hurdles or if there's any issues or perhaps any bugs that you found. We'd love to know so that we can make the pen tool even better for you. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel here. It means so, so much. When you do that, it helps us out a ton. It helps us when you like. It helps us when you comment on the video. It helps us when you share the video with people that you think might be interested in this. And and if you haven't given Kittle a try yet, I hope this video has shown you some of what you can do. There's so much more that you can do. We didn't talk about templates. We didn't talk about our fonts. We didn't talk about anything else except the pen tool in this video, but we have so much more that you can do. So definitely check out all the videos on our YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next video.